altruistic and with selfish. Altruistic because, as we discussed with a few people at the beginning of the year, a lot of people here have knowledge that they can share because we don't have uh, the, the right platform sometimes to share. But each one of us knows something different that we can share with our peers. And so that's why I want to take this space to share a little bit of what I learned. And a little selfish because I get to practice public speaking. <laughs> and that's, that was one of my first objectives here coming to all coming to my MBA. So, I'll just do a brief introduction on myself. Uh, and I will explain a little bit what the Scout Movement is. Because I can't speak about what I learned from them if you don't even know what it is. Then I'll just explain uh, my experience and what I learned throughout the years as a Cub Scout, a Senior Scout, and a Scout Master later on as an adult, and some final words to conclude. So first, all of you know me, I'm 28, I'm Brazilian, and I worked for small companies at the beginning. I learned from them, I learned, uh, I worked for big companies, um, such as, as I mentioned, Deloitte, IBM, and Accenture, but none of them taught me as much as this organization, the Boy Scouts of Brazil. And I've been with them for 20 years. I count all that time because I joined them when I was eight. And you're not, once you're a scout, you never stop being a scout. So I count from day one until today, and that's been 20 years. I served as, I volunteered as a scout, uh, scout chief for four years before coming to Vault. And I got to learn a lot more from that too. But first, do you know what the, the scout movement is? Anyone who hasn't been a scout like Eric can tell me what their guess. You want to guess that? Do you, Shane? A bunch of young people learning how to survive in nature? Yeah. And out. Good guess. Yes. Selling cookies to make life a problem. Selling cookies? Okay. <laughs> you want to say? I, I think you uh, earn badges by doing projects and by developing yourself. Yes, true. Yeah. Also correct. But I think I'll let the scouts from the UK explain a little bit. So tell me, when one thinks of scouting, what comes to mind? Boys, knots, popper, tents, wobbles, something about dibs and dogs. Well, think again. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. It's great watching young people go out and try activities. And of course, you get the opportunity to try activities yourself. Some of the things that I've had, I was going to never ever try. So I chose a video from the uh, UK because scouting differs a little bit from country to country. And the country that has the closest uh, way of acting as in Brazil, as where I learned as UK. And it actually, the new movement actually started in the UK as well. Uh, it started in 1907, 107 years ago. And it was, it, it's fun, yeah, you saw it's fun, but it has a purpose. Every game, every activity has a purpose. And it's a, a movement towards education. It's a complement to your, to, to the child's education. So you can learn, uh, at home with your parents, you can learn in school, you can interact with other kids at churches and other groups, but no other organization offers an environment that, teach, that teaches them so much. So they get to interact with, uh, they get to, to work as teams from early ages, uh, they get to interact with people from different social backgrounds, for example. At the school, everyone has basically the same social background, um, but not here. They're all mixed and they learn how to respect that, how to work with the different types of people, different religions. And as and in the UK, Brazil also has boys and girls, which means they not only learn how to respect uh, girls, but they also learn how to work with them. And that's very good, that's very uh, helpful in the future in the workplace. So we develop six different uh, development areas the physical side, intellectual, social, affective, spiritual, but most of all the character. That's the main point about scouting. And for the example I'm, uh, the example I'm going to give today, uh, I need to explain this really, really simply. We use a patrol system to get them to interact with each other. How does that work? There is one patrol with eight kids. The first one up top is the leader. The, the patrol leader, leader. there's a sub-leader, and six, up to six elements. That patrol is a part of a troop. Up to four other patrols uh, make the same troop. And that troop is commanded uh, by an volu adult volunteer, which was me at some point. So, uh, I started with eight years old as a Cub Scout, and the motto for the Cub Scout is, do your best. So as soon as you, you walk in the, the, the first activity, you learn that you have to do your best no matter what, in everything you, you do in life. Secondly, we all heard this one before, be prepared. You have to be prepared for what? Be prepared to help others, to, for anything, anything basically that you think can go wrong, you start thinking in advance. For example, in the business world, coming, few minutes earlier to be prepared for the presentation, not be caught by surprise. Same motto as a senior scout, and as you grow older, you get, you get a new motto to serve. And why does it change? Because you start thinking how you can serve the community, how you can give back to the community that's teaching you. And after 21, we become adult volunteers if you want to keep in the scout movement. And I've seen uh, chief scouts over uh, with over 100 years old. So I started as a Cub Scout with 8, from 8 to 11, and I'm in this picture. Can anyone see who am I? I'll, I'll help you. They wouldn't do it again. 
So you have to give always positive reinforcement. <coughs> Secondly, can anyone tell me why I put a plastic bag here? Anyone have a wild guess? Back, show, you know, you have their back. It's not show, you have their bag. It's yeah. show you have their back. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll explain. When you go camping, it's like a, like a competition. Every patrol uh, has to do better than the other ones. And one way you can get points is through an inspection, a backpack inspection, every morning. And the way we, we uh, organize our backpacks is by putting stuff in plastic bags. Because if it rains, then it doesn't ruin your stuff. Then you still have clothes to wear the next day. So, I learned that when you're young, your mother makes your bag for you. Right? The kids, they learn how to do it properly, but their moms would do it for them. So none of their clothes or equipment had plastic bags. So I learned to take several, like 30 plastic bags to every camp, because I knew some of them would forget. And how does that translate to the real world now? When we have an important client meeting, I always bring extra ties. And Dusha and Eric know this. <laughs> <laughs> Also set an environment for the, the new people, the newcomers. The longer they take to adjust to the environment, the longer they take to start contributing. So what you have to do is ask them out to, to meals, uh, get to interact more with them, make them feel welcome. And the next lesson I learned was you can accomplish a lot more through teamwork than you can by yourself. And I was a, a model Cub Scout. I could get any badge I wanted. I could run faster than the others. I could jump higher. I got a medal actually in one of the Scout Olympics for jumping. And but my patrol wasn't doing so well. And I realized I needed to involve them too. I needed to help them grow to achieve uh, new, new heights. And by the end, when I was 11, I got out this white wolf. The chief gave me a white wolf. And she said that the patrol was better than all the other ones in the last six months. And that's why I was being awarded with the white wolf. So, uh, over 10 years later, I went back and I talked to one chief that was a chief at the time I was. And I told her, oh yeah, I saw the wolf in the, in the locker. And I said, oh yeah, I got this once. He said, really? Yeah, I, I was the best of the four patrols in my crew. And she said, no. We only gave this to the best patrol out of the four troops. So your patrol was better than the other 15. It was really rare to get this. So I realized that giving more attention to my team actually made a difference. And I wouldn't have done it either if I hadn't talked to my peers, to my uh, peers as patrol leaders. Because they had problems with their teams too. There's always a bat on your patrol and you need to know how to handle them. And you ask the others, what, what are you doing? How are you controlling them? How are you dealing with it? And you help each other. So when you're on top, it's very lonely. You can't talk to your team. How do I, how do I deal with you? You're messing up. You can't, but there are people who are in the same situation, and you can ask them for help. And something we should do here, after all, is call each other. I have this situation. I don't know how to deal with it. Do you have any idea? Give them room to fail, but always stand next to them to help them get up on their feet quickly. So this example, I learned it as a Cub Scout, but this example here is actually when I was already a chief. You can't see the girls' faces, right? It's too small. Yeah, maybe like this. Look at their faces. Do they look ready to go hiking? That's where we were going. No. So as a teenage, as teenage girls, they skipped breakfast because someone said they were too fat. But we knew they couldn't have enough energy to go hiking if they skipped. But no matter what we told them, 
obviously they were listening. They said, oh yeah, I, I ate the vodka and that's it. So we noticed that, we let it slide, but we brought food with us, we brought sugar and all that energy stuff. And we let them reach this point and say, oh no, and realize I should have eaten breakfast. And then, yes, you're right next to them, I guess. But let them fail first. That's the, the best way to learn. This here uh, is an example of activities that we do. We sing songs. And I would like to invite you guys all to sing with me. It's really simple. It looks very complicated, I know. But it looks simple. Think of, of it as fours. Like there are always a set of four words. It's easier that way. I'll sing it first, and you all sing it after me. So, gingam guli 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 waka, waka gingam gu gingam gu, gingam guli 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 waka gingam gu gingam gu. Heila, heila sheila, heila sheila heila u. Heila, heila sheila, heila sheila. So it goes like this over and over. And we could do like a, a, a symphony, a few people with different functions, but that's not the point right now. I would like to invite you all to get up. Stand up. So I have a challenge for you all. I would like to disturb the class going on in Pacific. <laughs> so my invitation is, you have to match my volume. Deal? Deal. Deal. From here. You mean, me, me, me. Everyone combined should match my volume. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Giga, guri, 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 wacha! Giga, guri, 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 wacha! Giga, guri, 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 There was someone else, there were only three people. 
but the other one, the second one was so irresponsible that the chief said, when the other one was, the, the leader was, uh, left the group, the other one was so irresponsible that my chief said, well, Marshall will, will take over. And so I started my career as a patrol leader, as a senior scout patrol leader, with one follower that hated me for taking his position. <laughs> okay, let's get more people to his patrol. They put two more people. Two people that had just, that they were patrol leaders in their own patrols as Boy Scouts. And they went out because they got older and they were put in my patrol. So they were used to commanding their patrols. So I had one guy who hated me, didn't want to follow, and two guys who didn't respect me because I was new to the group. So those are the, one of the follow challenges I faced. First of all, I needed to get them to understand that everyone needs to have a goal. Even if you just need to go get water during camp. No one likes that goal. It's the worst one. Not the worst, one of the first ones that you, you do. Uh, someone needs to get wood for the fire. So some are more pleasant, some are less. Or, and also someone needs to cook. That's how I got my passion for cooking. <laughs> I used to get from my patrol. But if people don't have a clear role, everything will be a mess. You won't have a fire to cook at night. You won't have water to drink. And you can't go out of your camp in the middle of the night because it may be too dangerous. So everyone needs to count on each other. And most importantly, the, the leader needs to set clear roles and responsibilities. Create and develop a team spirit. Uh, after uh, there's a, a national and regional, there are national and regional competitions where the patrols uh, go to bases doing uh, activities. And after each activity, each base, they get gathered and they scream their uh, patrol song, the patrol chant. And you see these competitions, the ones that are winning are the ones that start from the beginning uh, screaming even louder. You, you can see that they give passion, they're all together, they know they're united, and that's why they do better in the end. Listen to everyone, don't ignore the youngest ones. So these are Cub Scouts, and I was impressed how they could do things that even my peers at work couldn't do. Um, I always pay attention to the trainees or to the undergrads, because I know they have something to offer. And most people don't, actually. When there's someone young on the team, they don't pay attention. So in one of those competitions that I just mentioned, there was one Cub Scout, ex-Cub Scout, she was just uh, like promoted, she was just uh, transferred to the Girl Scouts, the older, older girls. And they had a task to analyze a map and answer the question, where, which, which direction does this river go? And their patrol had no clue. So we're looking at a map like this. Which direction? And this girl, she was a Cub Scout one week before, she still had a Cub Scout uh, suit. And she said, well, it has to be from A to B, because A is higher. They completely ignored her. <laughs> Have you ever seen a river go up the mountain? <laughs> she had a point, and they didn't listen because she was young. She was the youngest one. And we commonly do that in our teams and our companies too. Maybe they have something we don't know on their backgrounds and we should listen to them. Maybe they don't have anything to add, but at least listen. Be open to new ideas. You will never have all the answers. Someone will have a better answer. In this case, this kid's tent didn't have a roof, and it was going to rain at night. His leader didn't know what to do. But she let him, he said, I have an idea, and she said, do it. That's his umbrella, by the way. So he took his umbrella and put it there. 
Another thing I learned is to have patience. I've seen and heard, even on the AP here, three people fighting very loudly, and that will never take this anywhere. And I told in Max's class once, a case that I had, uh, that someone at work started screaming a lot of me, crying, very passionate. I had to be able to control myself. There was no use to fight back. I had to let her let it all out and then talk patiently. And that happens a lot with the young people. They, you need to, you're in the middle of a game, you need to tie eight different knots to win the game. There's always this younger person who goes there and I don't know how to do it. Be patient, go next to them and gently, calmly help them grow. To sum up this part, uh, we need to set clear roles and responsibilities, create a team, team spirit, listen to everyone, and be open to new ideas, but none of this will matter if you don't have patience. So be patient. Finally, I, I left the city again and I went back to Rio. And I, I went to, to the university there. One second. speaking too much. So I went to the university and at, by the end I started reading books about leadership, I started having classes about leadership and I started to realize, wait, this had a contribution to my, my work life. So I knew how to work in teams, I knew how to lead better. I want to go back and contribute to other kids too. So I became a scoutmaster when I was 23 and I stayed a scoutmaster for four years until I came to Holt. First thing I learned was that I couldn't ask for the scouts, I couldn't ask for the scout leaders to do anything if I couldn't give them the knowledge. So I started offering courses. I started offering, uh, showing them uh, the tools they could use to do their jobs better. Then I could say, okay, I gave you what you need, now I can demand something from you. And they understood that. Communication is key in two ways. First, public speaking. I didn't speak with a group of 50 people. Uh, but not only, uh, talking to 101, that's very important too. And the time it took me to, to talk to each one of them was long. A lot of scout chiefs don't take that long talking to the scouts, as a lot of managers don't take that long talking to their workers, their employees. But it's important. In the end, you get their respect, you learn more about them, and you, you can get everyone to do a better job. To be a leader, sometimes you need to serve. And I read this the first time in a book by James C. Hunter in college. So this was a camp with 5,000 scouts. She broke her leg on the second day. Then we were staying there for 10 days. She would miss everything. We did not want that to happen. So we carried her, me and that guy, we carried her around the huge camp every day of the next few days. And she had a blast. So sometimes you can't do much, but you know your, your team can. Help them, give them the tools, give them whatever support they need to perform their jobs. You'll make mistakes, but be positive and learn from them. So if you fall, it's okay. Take it lightly, be positive, and analyze what you did wrong. Uh, when I became a, a scout chief, I, I made a lot of mistakes. But I was humble enough to admit them and tell the kids, I, I was wrong. Tell me, what can I do better? And we should all be positive and learn from them, and in the end, it will all be worth it. So, to sum it up, uh, as a scout master, I, I learned to provide knowledge and tools to my team. I learned to communicate better. I learned to be ready to serve my team and to learn from my mistakes. So, there's nothing like you, you giving something to your team. You should empower them to become the stars they want to be. 
That's Freddie Mercury, by the way. So then I thought back. Do you remember the, the, the motors I said at the beginning? The be, do, do your, your best, be prepared, serve. and serve. <laughs> so I thought, wait, that means for being a leader, all I have to do is be prepared to serve to the best of my abilities. And I learned that, and I'm sharing that with you guys, and I hope you learned something from